Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy, and today we're going to talk about the patch tool. Now, the patch tool is a very effective tool to remove distractions. So if you're looking at this photo now, you'll see all these nasty puddles all over the place, but we can magically make them disappear with the patch tool. Here's the before, here's the after and all of our nasty, disgusting distractions are gone. So let's jump in, lots of awesome stuff to show you here in this patch tool tutorial. The patch tool is an awesome tool to use to clean up all the little distractions that you might find in your image, like you see here in this photograph from Chicago. In the morning, early afternoon, it had rained a little bit, and then we were out shooting in the evening, and there were still some puddles on the ground that the sun hadn't quite burned away. But we can still salvage this photograph if we want to for further post-processing by getting rid of the distractions. And we have to do that first before we can get into the editing process. If you want to download this image, feel free to. If you're on YouTube, it'll be in the description. If you're on F64 Academy, there'll be a button here where you can download that and you can practice all you want with the patch tool. So there's a couple settings you need to know with the patch tool. And one of the best ways to actually use the patch tool is on its own layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press command or control J on the background layer to give myself my own layer. You can even call this patches if you want to. Now, unlike many other tools, there aren't very many uses for the sample all layers. Now, if you're using content aware with this tool, sample all layers can be very effective. But if you're using the normal setting, you can't actually use the content aware with sample all layers. So that's why I typically do this on its own layer in general. The first thing we're going to talk about is the normal patch. So over here, you have your different selection methods. We're just going to use the regular selection method because we don't need to intersect or add any selections. Those are some fancy tools for making bigger selections. When you see how I use the patch tool, it's a really effective way. There's other things here. There's source and destination. So there's two things. So the source one, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a selection here and then I'm going to move this over and that's basically saying that the patch is going to change based on the source that you select press Control D and look at that the patch is beautiful now let's go back let's select that and let's go to destination so if we go to destination and we move this over we're basically saying okay we want this part to go where this part is so destination might not be the sele best selection for that one but destination can be used in this way, where if we have destination selected, we can select this area and move this over and say, OK, patch that area up for me. But what I find the most effective way to do is to actually use the patch tool when it's set to normal with source so that I can make an accurate selection of the source that I need to patch and then move it over to select the areas. Now, watch what happens when we move this source over. What happens is this block is actually a lot darker than the block to the left. Just uh, maybe uh, a couple pixels or shades of luminance of gray darker. But when we select that area, the patch tool is smart enough to select the surrounding areas and blend it in. That's why the patch tool is so effective for removing these distractions here. So if I zoom in on this area, I can just select this guy right here and move on over over to here. Good, good stuff. Now, another thing you can do because you have the patch tool selected is you can actually use other selection tools. So the patch tool actually has a free form selection, which might not give you a really accurate selection when you get over to these edges. So what I would suggest is to use something like the polygonal lasso tool. And I'm going to grab this area right here, this area right here, move this over to here, move this up to here, and I can replace this entire block because I've now selected it. Then I can move into the patch tool, move this on down, and I've selected that entire block and patched it with the block below to get a more accurate selection for that area. So with this spot right here, this is an interesting spot because it's dark. So if we were to try and take the selection and move it over to here and move it here, we, we don't get the exact same uh, structure of the the granite that's in this rock as we do that's in this rock and the blend just looks really odd and really funky okay so what we need to do with this one is switch this over to content aware now when i switch this over to content aware i'm going to grab this block just a little bit of this block and move it over to here and when I select content aware, it actually selects the exact content that was in this block and replaces it with this one. It doesn't do the blending that you saw with the normal mode. So what I'm going to do to fix this block, I'm going to just take little selections at a time. So I'll just select this area right here and move this over to here and select that spot. And then I'll move over to here and then grab a little bit more each, each time I grab a little bit more to select that spot. And then I'll come over here, do the same thing over here, and select over here into this spot, and do this until I get this whole thing all patched up. 
I'll patch up over here, move over to that spot. And we can always clean up the things later. You see there's like the different like blend that's happening here. Don't really worry too much about how that's blending. Okay, just move that over. If at any time you want to change the structure, look at the structure is set to seven. So I've already patched that with that area. I can come to the structure and adjust the structure right from within that patch because it's already been patched. A good structure to pick is a structure of about four. And the structure is going to change. Basically, the structure is how the selection is being made with content aware. Because content aware is one of those really funny things in Photoshop, it finds an area and it says, okay, you selected this area. I'm going to make it look like that area, but I'm also going to grab some other things from that area too. So it tries to uh, be aware of the content that you want to fill. That's why it's called content aware. And we'll just grab this and just this whole little spot right here, move that over. And that almost looks pretty good. I'm going to grab this little spot down here and move this up because it's a slight tinge of blue that's different. It's probably something with the lens. I was using a Roki down 14 millimeter with a Metabones adapter on a Sony. So it's probably not the best way to use a, a Roki down lens like that. But look at the difference now in that block there after doing that selection. So if we go back to the very beginning here, you can see those distractions were removed rather easily. And I can come up here and just continue on. This one, I'd probably not go with content aware. I'd probably go with something more like the normal. So if I select content aware, move over to here, it's not too bad. But if I were to change that to normal instead, it's probably going to give me a better selection and it's going to blend it a little bit better. And all these distractions can be moved. If you're shooting around in the city, this can be helpful for removing cigarette butts, um, all kinds of different things. If there's patchy grass, this is a great tool to use to cover up patchy grass in the front yard or maybe a real estate photograph that you're working on. This can be an awesome tool to use on just about any part of your image that has little distractions in it that you want to remove before the editing process. I would say this is something I would definitely do before I start editing my photograph. You know, there's other things that you can use tool too, like the clone stamp tool. That's a great tool to use. Uh, but this tool is much faster because with clone stamp, it's very literal. And sometimes it, it's based off of the brush that you're using. This isn't really based off of the brush that you're using. Another quick tip here with your selections is let's say we zoom in on this area and we select this block right here. Okay. When we make that selection, because this is a regular selection before I even make any patches, I can come up to select, I can go to modify and I can even feather this patch. So I can feather this patch by maybe five pixels. And then when I move this over, it's going to be a feathered selection. So every time you want to do that, you're going to have to go up and feather that selection a little bit more, but it can be a very useful way to feather in the sides of that image. So let's look at the overall before. Let's go on up to the very top. There's our before with all those nasty distractions all over the place. And here's the after. Now I can keep going and get all these puddles and remove all these distractions, but I'm going to save you the time. You can practice that on this image because it's yours to download and play with as you see fit. So what did we talk about here? We talked about how the patch tool is best used on its own layer. And the reason why is because in the content aware side, you can sample all layers, but in the normal side of the patch tool, you can't. So your best bet is to actually just make a whole new layer above your background and start going to town with the patch tool and cleaning things up a little bit. We talked about the normal patch and the normal patch, when it grabs a selection from one area and places it onto another area, it does its best job to feather in. Notice how this block was rather dark compared to this block and it feathered that in it just kind of uh, adjusted the, the curve, I guess, if you will, of that one specific spot to make it blend better. So it's not a literal selection from one spot to the next. It's a nice transition. We talked about the destination and the source, how you can either grab the source of the thing that you want to, to fill and move it over to grab the source from another area or how you can take the destination of one spot and move it completely over to another spot. And there's definitely a place for both of those. I prefer the source one because it allows me to get a perfect, accurate selection to move over to another spot and fill that area in. We also talked about how you can use any type of selection for this now. So you can use your polygonal lasso tool and make a selection with any selection method you want, switch back over to the patch tool and use that selection to patch things up, which also leads us into the fact that you can feather those pixels now using the selection method at the, in the top menu bar of your image and go to select, go to, um, modify and go to feather or expand or contract. So you're not limited to just the free form patch tool shape. 
And then we also talked about how you can use the patch tool with content aware so that you can fill areas without having them blend like it would with normal. As we saw in the lower portion of the photograph, it was much better to use the content aware than it was to use the actual normal patch. So again, my name is Blake Rudis. That's the patch tool in a nutshell. If you like this, please comment, share it, tell a friend because uh, this type of stuff can help save many photographs out there, especially in the real estate industry where people have these beautiful, beautiful houses and horrible patchy grass. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this and to further expand your knowledge of photo post-processing. Have a good one.